potential tropical cyclone three, which has just been designated by the National Hurricane Center just a couple hours ago as a potential tropical cyclone, as they felt tropical storm warnings and updates on the system was necessary, considering that there is a 90% chance of development. There was a reconnaissance plane in the storm earlier, but they did not find much and did not find that the storm had a closed center enough in order to call this a depression and or tropical storm. Let's take a look at some satellite imagery on potential tropical cyclone 3. Now, as you can see, there is really not a lot going on there. There is a little rotation that is trying to get its act together, but it needs a lot more clouds around the actual center itself before we could really get any strength, which I do not really expect at all. Current winds are 30 miles per hour or 25 knots with a pressure of 1,007 millibars and its current movement is north at 9 miles per hour or 8 knots. For the first time this year we have warnings and watches for, we have warnings for Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama basically from the middle of Louisiana out to the Alabama, Florida border. And there's currently no watches in effect for the U.S. or anywhere at this current moment in time. Let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures for the storm coming up. Anywhere in that red area is highly favorable sea surface temperatures. Anywhere in that orange is favorable. And in that yellow is slightly favorable sea surface temperatures. And as you can see, it will be moving through red for the majority of, well, for the, likely for the rest of its lifetime until it hits land and at that point of course the sea surface temperatures would have no effect at all anyways but as you can see the sea surface temperatures are about the only thing that is favorable for the storm at this current moment in time at the moment it is moving from neutral to high to unfavorable wind shear at the moment, it really does not have any wind shear. Well, it did not have much wind shear, but it is moving into a high wind shear area. It has had quite a bit of wind shear for the majority of today, though. It is moving into that highly unfavorable wind shear, though, at this current moment in time. It is... It's rainfall potential anywhere in that red area. You could expect to see around 8 to 12 inches of rain. And in that yellow area, you could expect to see anything of 6 to 8 inches of rain. I mean, 4 to 8 inches of rain. In that yellow area, while that darkish green area, you will likely see 2 to 4 inches of rain. And in that lime green, potentially two, up to 2 inches of rain. At least, in my opinion, at this current moment in time from the storm. This is the potential for rain. It could be higher, it could be lower. It is really hard to predict stuff like this in storms. This is my predicted track and intensity forecast. I do not take it quite as high as a lot of other people. I keep this at 40 miles per hour. For, and as it makes landfall, I think it will actually keep its intensity quite a while into land before quite quickly actually losing its intensity once over potentially Alabama or Georgia, maybe even up into Tennessee or North Carolina. Let's look at that PDI stage, or Potential Damage Index, and it is currently at a stage 3 for the Gulf Coast, with a stage 1 in the wind, stage 2 in the surge, and a stage 5 in the rainfall, which gives us a PDI stage 3. Let's look at the surge likelihood for, for two, up to 2 feet, it is quite likely Anywhere in that 2 to 5 foot range is somewhat likely. That 7 to 10 is quite unlikely. And that red and those red and dark red areas are basically non-existent in chances. The oranges are highly unlikely as well, at least in the moment, at this moment. So they should probably be reds. But that yellow still remains for that 2 to 5 in the surge. Likely seeing one to three feet of surge in many areas that the storm is coming through. Let's look at the rainfall potential, and I'm giving it a green likelihood all the way up into the 8 to 12 region. And once you get to that 12 to 15, you start getting into those yellows. I think there's actually quite a good chance that we could receive 13 inches of rain in isolated areas, which is why I've 
let it keep that yellow in that area while it quickly deteriorates into the oranges and the reds, it is quite unlikely to see the um these potentials happen if they get into the orange, red, and dark red areas. Well, they're quite likely in the yellow and very likely in the green. Now let's look at the wind. Highly unlikely anything above 60 with a moderate chance of 45 to 60. But if it does get in that area, I do believe that the highest likelihood would be like 50 and the 60 would be more of an orange area. But on this graph, it does not quite go into the sectors like that, so a yellow for that area. Let's just look at the PDA stage, PDI stages for the areas on land, and you can see that green area in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and maybe even slightly into Florida, just on the Alabama-Florida border. And then you see that huge blue area that will likely extend up into North Carolina, Tennessee, and maybe even small, a very small portion of Arkansas, although it's unlikely, and up into Tennessee, whatnot, Mississippi, Alabama. And there is still some rainfall down there in the bottom portions by the Yucatan and southern Mexico. So I have also given that a blue, at least for the moment. I'd like to just discuss what I've seen on the models really quickly. It looks like they are bringing a weak tropical storm to tropical depression into the Gulf Coast. What I have noticed that is quite interesting, at least in my opinion, is in the later portions of the models. So... Keep in mind, this is the later portions of the models, so it's not quite likely, but it does look like a couple of the models actually try to potentially redevelop this off the East Coast, although at this moment, I do not think this is likely at all. I am just keeping you guys up to date with the fact that there is actually a chance, at least in my opinion, based off what the GFS, ECMFW, or the Euro model or the, and the ICON model are showing at the moment, just some low pressure systems in that general area, as well as even the ICON model bringing down to a 998 millibar pressure system just off the east coast from the system that moved over America. After that, it looks like it kind of redevelops it into potentially something even stronger than what it was in the Gulf. Like I said, this is highly unlikely at the moment, just saying what I see on some of the models and a potential heads up that Claudette could potentially survive or reform off the East Coast. Again, highly unlikely at this point, but you never know. We'll just have to wait and see what the system does that far down the road. Thank you guys for watching this update on Potential Tropical Cyclone 3 which will likely become Claudette or Tropical Depression 3 sometime tonight or tomorrow. If not still, that rainfall potential is high and will likely be the worst factor other than some winds that will be, re that will be received on the Gulf Coast from the system. Just remember that this is a right lopsided storm, so if you're on the left side, you will receive less impacts. And this, the right side will receive a lot more than the left side considering the fact that there's the PDA state the PDI stage areas do not really extend far to the left from the center. But like I said, thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with this twenty twenty one Atlantic hurricane season. Thank you guys for watching and signing off.